our oceans are dying. Human activity is stripping away marine life. Global heating is causing catastrophic acidification of coral reefs. And plastic pollution is quite literally starving species of key nutrients. My name is Lex Rigby and I'm the campaigns manager at Viva. And for the best part of my adult life, I have been actively campaigning for the protection of marine wildlife and defending oceanic ecosystems from widespread destruction. I really became passionate about our oceans through watching David Attenborough documentaries as a kid, but it wasn't really until around 2006 when I actually read about a northern bottlenose whale that was trapped in the River Thames that I kind of plunged headfirst at this point into the conservation movement. And really from that moment, it was a bit of a whirlwind. I went on to participate in numerous campaigns to face down an aggressive whaling fleet that was killing whales in the Antarctic drive pods of pilot whales away from the bloody shores of the Faroe Islands, chase a notorious toothfish poaching vessel from the Southern Ocean right up to the west coast of Africa, and assist in the arrests of numerous illegal fishing vessels that were operating, still are operating around Gabon, Sao Tome and Liberia. And during those experiences, I really saw firsthand the impact that humans are having on the oceans whether that be the overwhelming size of industrial fishing nets that are scooping up entire schools of fish, the plastic debris that is found in the stomachs of Antarctic and Patagonia toothfish that, that live in the frigid waters of Antarctica 1500 meters below the surface, and the explosive harpoons that you know once fired into the majestic whales causes all of the water surrounding the whale and all its family to turn red with its blood. And in the last 50 years, we've lost more than 50% of our marine life, and that's through a variety of reasons, including increased consumer demand for seafood, the rapid development of industrialized fishing practices, and of course, widespread plastic pollution. Industrial fishing fleets have really destroyed about 90% of the world's fish populations, and every year we kill in excess of two trillion wild fish globally. It's a number that is so hard to measure in singular terms that we refer to fish slaughter in weight. So we talk about tons, we don't talk about the number of individuals. And overfishing is a term that's been around for a little while now and it's widely accepted as more of a problem in the North Atlantic than anywhere else in the world. And generally, when we're talking about overfishing, we're referring to when more fish are caught than can be replaced through natural reproduction. So when fish are overfished, it means that populations of that fish species are unable to cope with meeting the fishing demand. And as a result, the fragile marine ecosystems, which are the world's, like the planet's life support system, are disrupted. And we've seen popular fishing grounds dwindle as a result of fleets overfishing and they've been pushed further afield to developing nations where more than half of fish exports now originate. And as a result, seafood has become one of the most traded commodities worldwide. Aside from the mismanagement of legal fisheries responsible for overfishing, our oceans are also under assault from illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing operations. And these unscrupulous poachers really take advantage of enforcement vacuums on the high seas, corrupt administrations in poorer states and weak management regimes that lack effective monitoring, control and surveillance. And that could be a funding thing. It could quite well be that these, these states just don't have the money to effectively patrol their waters. So it's really become a modern day piracy and it is highly profitable. In fact, it's thought that today one in three fish are caught illegally or through the exploitation of regulations. And yet the scale of destruction and suffering of fish is almost entirely hidden from view. It's not like with land-based farmed animals where you can investigate and you can expose shocking practices and you can have some really successful actions to help those animals. It just means that, you know, fishing is out there. We, we just don't see it and it's not on our radar. 
And since industrial fishing is indiscriminate, so it's the wrong species, the wrong sizes, even the wrong sexes are incidentally caught in the process of fishing. And often these are just simply thrown back overboard and they're dead. And this is the fish that we refer to as bycatch. And a further 300,000 small whales, dolphins and porpoises die from entanglement in fishing nets globally every year. But due to underreporting catch figures and the practice of high grading, which is when low value fish are dumped at sea and replaced with higher value fish a bit later, the number of deaths is far likely to exceed total fish production estimates. So when we say two trillion fish, that is far below the true figure of how many fish are killed at sea every single year. Since Blue Planet 2, we've all become increasingly aware of plastic pollution and the impact that it has on the marine environment. And yet, abandoned fishing gear, the ocean's deadliest plastic pollutant, is still very much under the radar. Again, we just, we just don't see it. And since the 1950s, more than 8.3 billion tonnes of plastic has been produced. It's a highly versatile, lightweight and durable material that's easy to mould and shape and we use it in life support, you know, life-saving medical equipment, so disposable syringes, intravenous blood bags and heart bells. It's in our renewable energy sources, so it's in wind turbines, it's in solar cells and we use it in hygienic packaging for the transportation and sale of food and drink. It's literally a material that floods our homes, it floods our workplaces, and it floods our entire existences. Yet shockingly, only 9% of it is thought to have ever been recycled. Uh, but you know, given the complexity of plastic with its different polymers, its different recycling processes, there's, there's an awful lot of plastic that actually doesn't get recycled. And, there's an awful lot of it that doesn't biodegrade, it instead actually just breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces. So, you know, we say that some of these plastic pieces take between 450 to 1000 years to decompose. But since plastic has not even been around that long, we, we've got no idea whether that's true or not. And, it, and, you know, therefore it's likely that every single piece of plastic ever made still exists and the UN estimates that there's about 8 million tons of that that leaks into the ocean every year and they equate that to dumping a garbage truck of plastic every minute a garbage truck of plastic every minute and a reported 640,000 tons of fishing gear is lost or discarded at sea and the impact of that goes well beyond pollution it becomes known as ghost nets so yeah this kind of lost abandoned discarded fishing gear they become ghost nets and they go on killing and that's obviously to the detriment of marine habitats and the wildlife that's getting caught up in them and they're fast becoming the biggest killer in the ocean catching seals whales dolphins turtles sharks guillemots albatross crabs all the really cool stuff that live around the ocean in the ocean and of course fish they are still killing fish even when they're not supposed to be they're still killing fish and they destroy the hard and soft corals and are responsible for wiping out entire ecosystems so you name it it kills it so well, when i talk about a lot of these issues which i feel like i've been doing for quite a while now sometimes the response i get to that is uh well, I only farmed fish, so it doesn't really apply to me. And I really, really struggle with that because we are being pushed this idea that the way to combat overfishing, the way to combat plastic pollution, the way to combat bycatch is to farm fish instead. And so aquaculture has fast become the world's biggest it's the fastest growing food production sector and it generates about 44 percent of the fish we consume and yet in order to sustain its growth it is heavily reliant on the capture of wild caught fish so we are literally catching wild caught fish to feed farmed fish in the uk 
we slaughter about 115, that's 115 million farmed fish, making fish the second largest farmed animal slaughter for food behind chickens. And the most commonly farmed species is of course the Atlantic salmon. But as every pound of farmed salmon consumes around three pounds of wild caught fish, there are far more lives lost than one salmon. You know, there are hundreds of lives lost. And as with land-based factory farms, conditions on fish farms cannot replicate the complexities of an animal's natural environment. And so fish suffer from a range of serious welfare issues. High stocking densities create stressful environments in which fights regularly break out, causes fin damage and abrasions. Low stocking densities often mean that fish are more open to predation and, and therefore feel more threatened. And we know that fish feel and we know that they feel pain. But both environments are hugely distressing and that leads to high mortality rates, poor water quality, disease outbreaks, increased levels of sea lice, which also negatively impact the surrounding natural environment and the wild fish populations. Now the fact that fish feel pain shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. It's been scientifically proven time and time again. But what I think leads us to believe that fish don't feel anything at all is really our own inability to relate to them, whether that's due to a lack of facial expression or more familiar and recognisable forms of communication like speech, you know, they, they can't talk to us and they can't feel if they can't talk to us. However, they're actually much more like us than you would think and their pain receptors respond to stimuli in just the same way as ours do or any other animals when they are activated. Now having spent a long time around the ocean and under the surface, I've grown to really appreciate fish as individuals and I am absolutely fascinated by their complexities. They're key to the survival of our planet and it still blows my mind that they're the last to leave our plates. Choosing dolphin friendly tuna does not reduce the number of lives lost at sea. Opting for farmed fish over wild fish doesn't alleviate the problem of overfishing and ditching a plastic straw won't stop plastic pollution. The only thing that is gonna have any kind of impact on any of these issues is to choose vegan.